YouTube, what's good, man? Welcome back to Yahweh's ENT channel. We got Von. Morning, it is. We got people of this tribe violate all laws of physics. Some crazy jump, but I, I just took a glimpse, and them folks said somebody, the world's strongest man. Them folks look like me. They're like him. Oh, they, wrong on. Them. Don't even, they probably don't, they don't even feel beast things. Come on now. Come on now. What's they, they, they going to war? I don't even see nobody. Is this fake? Bro, there's a lot of stuff flying right in this little gap, bro. Is this real or what, bro? Flying. Do you see it? It's like stuff like, they shot an arrow when I'm seeing stuff fly Some back. Bugs. I don't know what I'm seeing. Look. Oh. Oh. Is them bugs? Did you <laughs> did you sip your river? Yeah. Okay. Yes. They drinking river water. Delicious. He said, del "Oh, that blood." Wow. How do you find it? Milky. Yeah, it's milky. Um, keep it clean. I don't know. I was kind of shocked. I was shocked when I saw it. I, I, I I'm not sure. They're using animal shit. Using oh. Animal shit. Uh, or the the cow's own shit, and so that did. Stop. Well, what they just did with the cow? Shit, they're using animal shit. Uh, or the the cow's own shit, and so that did stop the bleeding. Why did you kill um, And so they have this really peculiar diet. The principles of science do not seem to work everywhere in the world. At least, not with this set of people. One of these one of these guys. See, see it? It almost looks like a toy. Like you think it wouldn't work? No, There's one guy like in the village, works. Shawnee, that's so strong that he could shoot the arrow through the kudu. It was a Walk with us as Joe Rogan kudu. puts the spotlight a on the tribe that violates all laws of physics. What's up with this? What's up with this cow jump? But they just keep stabbing the cow with a bone arrow right to the neck. they going through him and then... Is that a, is that a, is that a book bag? Or is that, oh, they didn't kill the monkey. Like they made a bag. I don't know if they made a bag. It like they just got the monkey on the bag. It look like a book bag though. Oh my gosh. These are the old these school way. Scary. Living in the modern and civilized side of life makes a lot of people think that's the only way to live. But things get shocking when you find out that many tribes still live miles apart from civilization and all the modern day ideas. These tribes are mostly small groups of people who have little or no contact with the outside world. It's crazy that these folks really walk around with a bone arrow with bows and all of it just in their hand. Like if they had to just emergency shoot something, they got to uh, And have kept on with the same old way of life. <laughs> look, look. Nah, you do though, because think about it. Day Pause it real quick. Think about it. If you was in the woods, and modernly you was in the woods, you going to have a gun on you. You feel me? Because an animal can walk up and come, come you feel me? Unalive you. Yeah, but I ain't got to drop no bullets to shoot bullets. You gotta drop no bullet. You gotta yeah, look. Look, look. Are mostly small hey, they gonna shoot. People. Oh. They gotta drop. Oh, my <laughs> who have you little or no contact with the outside world and have kept on with the same old way of life. So while some of us are busy with TikTok trends and our favorite video sharing platforms, some point. of these people are still stuck with the old it ways of tales by moonlight. They ain't got no top on. One thing is that they seem not to have any problems with their way of life and the ones who get shocked to the bones are those who travel into these hidden places to see how they live. But it is just so... If you're running ads on... You wanna go? Man, hold on. They live. But it is just so incredible that there's still people that live the way they lived many, many, many thousands of years ago. And they essentially just get their resources from the land, from right. the area they live. And they're, they're just rocking it old school. On several episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience, Joe gets to interact with guests who have gone far into the depths of Africa and Asia to feed their eyes with some of the wonders of these tribes. What? Now, you know here's crazy? one thing about these about tribes. That type of they're not I never thought about that type. We all know, we always think when we see stuff like this, Africa, Africa, the black folks in Africa, but it's Asians over there living on the same little drill. Yeah, That's crazy, brother. America like tell you a dream. It could like be all type of races over there. White folk. In modern day technology, <laughs> they seem to be living outside the rules of science as well. This is the part that shocks these modern day guys because the tribes seem to have some special relationship so with the laws of nature. I'm talking about the kind of relationship. Why you come build a boat big enough to sit in? Why you got to stand in the boat? Oh, you man. You could have sat in the boat and did it regularly. Yeah. It's like crazy. They different over there. That we will never experience in the modern world today. 
So, without wasting any time, let's kick things off with the peculiar tribe called Maasai. The Maasai tribe. The Maasai tribe is a group of people that is well known around the world, or in most parts of Africa. Though they are just around a million and are mostly found in some parts of Kenya and Tanzania, the Maasai tribe stands out among other African tribes for many reasons. Typically, they are still far away from modern civilization, and for this reason, they have certain oh, yeah, told you. and practices that would be a shock to people of the modern world. Just think of an entire tribe whose livelihood is centered around their livestock, most especially cattle. The men of Maasai count their riches in cattle, wives, and children. In fact, if any man has more children or wives than cattle, he would be considered a poor man. Yeah, that sounds weird, but it would make a lot of sense when you realize that they mostly depend on cattle for food. And no, that doesn't necessarily mean that they eat beef. I guess that would have probably sounded better if it was the whole truth. In the real sense, these people are freaked about drinking cow blood like it's not a big deal. Yep, you heard that right. And trust me, Joe Rogan was just as shocked as you may be when his guest made this revelation on an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. According to the guest, the people of Maasai use an age-long technique to get blood from the cow. Then they mix this blood with cow milk and drink it. They just, when they kill the animal, they eat the blood. No, the Maasai will take an arrow, put it into a live cow's neck, drain some of the blood, then seal it up with some shit, and then drink that blood or mix that blood with milk. Why would they seal it up with shit? No matter how strange it sounds, <laughs> the people me? of Maasai <laughs> see this act as normal as anything you can think Why would you fill it up with shit? It seems like it's contaminating the womb. It is. It does, though. Dudu is fetus. Fetus. Whatever the word. Which needs to come out of the body. So no. why would you put it on a wound? I mean, they don't even cook it or take it through some processing. If that would make it better, it's not like drinking animal blood has any health benefits that we know of anyway. It may even hold a lot of risks to their health. But these people do not care, and they even do it as a form of celebration or on their most special occasions. They okay. probably drink it like, like we drink alcohol and beer, man. They build a drunk off animal blood. Okay, in case you think that the Maasai tribe would waste a whole cow just because they're thirsty from some red liquid, they also have a shocking way of keeping the cows safe after extracting what they need. Surprisingly, they have a funny way of closing up the cuts, and it sure works for them. We shouldn't be so surprised since it's an age-long practice anyway. However, the people get more from their most beloved cattle than the blood which they have become famous for. The Maasai are really interesting. So I, I've heard you talk about the Maasai before. The Maasai are really famous for eating milk, blood, and meat. It's quite shocking that the diet of the Maasai tribe revolves around their cattle. Then you gotta thank them for don't bridge no teeth. Come on, I'm trying to thank, do they? I, come on, bro. They you know they got them to, are you talking about like artificially bridge teeth? I don't think they brush teeth, period. What do you they, think they, they got use? Them little, remember them little things that be showing on TikTok? You can brush your teeth with the little, um, the little, you, you, you ain't seen it. They probably use if them. If they got them. Talk of large amounts of beef, yeah, plant, which has huh? even become a major part of their tradition. For the people of Maasai, beef sharing even holds a lot of significance with different parts of the beef shared based on social hierarchy. The way they section up meat is really interesting among the Maasai tribe and many other tribes are like this too. So what, how they separate the meat is that each quarter, each piece goes to a different group. And so they have ribs, they have front quarters, they have hind quarters. Some might go to pregnant women, some goes to young women, but the liver, the liver always goes to the older men. They also depend majorly on milk produced by the cattle as well. According to research, the Maasai people drink more milk and more milk products than any other group of people in the world. Maybe that would explain why they have some of the strongest men on earth. Their men have a stark difference from the rest of the world. Strongest men on earth is crazy. And they trying to say we ain't even supposed to drink milk though. I'm so confused. Are we supposed to drink no, it or but, not? But, but 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 you know we we have different processes of probably getting this milk. We Americans will torture the cows and make the milk be pulsed because they overusing them and all that. You feel me? So. Man, bro. They, they milk probably be more natural. Then the fact that they the strongest men in the world. Look at these folk. Bro, our strongest men in the world look huge. Nobody looks strong. I'm talking about like huge. Damn strong. Who they compete with? Because research has shown that they are one of the few tribes that can jump the highest, and they may even be the Dumb. first on the list. So when we say that they defy the laws of physics, that's exactly where it all makes sense. This tribe has a special jump dance, which is a major part of their culture, and to do this dance, they have to jump very high without aid. 
So we can say that the Maasai tribe has learned to live against the strong force of gravity if that makes sense. So since they have all the strength they need, the Maasai men take pride in hunting lions like they are little rats. Well, that lasted until the habit was banned in Eastern Africa, but they would still do it secretly if a lion dared to maul their most beloved cat. Hunt a lion like a cat. is on, crazy. On, then man. they ain't got no weapon. We skill a lion. We just shoot them with guns and run if they get too close. Come on, Them man. folks out there chasing lions with, with on, bow and arrows. Man. I can see that one. Nah, they got it. They got like, it, He B. said like a small rat. Come on now. You don't need... Come on now. Right. Cattle. You can just say that the Maasai tribe has some sort of controversial relationship with cattle. And of course, we all know how the dots connect. The Hadza tribe. Close to the Maasai tribe is another group of people who also live in the way that would blow your mind. Probably more shocking than the Maasai people. <laughs> this tribe called Hadza dominates some parts of Tanzania, and they're mostly known to be hunters and gatherers to this day. So unlike the people of Maasai who can depend on their livestock for years, this tribe has to go into the wild to hunt and gather their food. On an episode of the Joe Rogan Experience, David Cho goes deep into the hunting lifestyle of these people. Based on what he saw in his two-week stay with the Hadza people, the tribe must have been hunting for such a long time that they do not need to depend on any modern equipment for effective hunting. All they needed was some sticks which they used to make arrows. According to him, the guys would spend all day sharpening these sticks into arrows, then they would use a certain toxic plant on the tip so that the arrow can be more efficient. So what do they, what do they hunt with? Bow and arrow. Like homemade bow and arrow? Homemade bow and arrow like like just they they take this wood and they spent all day making the arrows. Yup. They use did, their did teeth. They show you? Yeah. They I, show I, you how they did I learned those? how to make it. And then I, uh, they use their teeth to, uh, I think I know that guy. However, after long hours of working on the arrow, it would still but look like a toy the to the modern man until these guys handle the arrows themselves. In fact, the arrows are so effective that the Hadza men would use them to hunt baboons and other large animals. One of, these, they... one of these guys, see, see it? It almost looks like a toy. Like mm. you think it wouldn't work. No, There's one guy like in the village, works. Shawnee, that's so strong that he could shoot the arrow through the fucking kudu. It was a Come to think of it, why does the simple instrument they sharpened out of tiny sticks seem to work such wonders in their hands? I guess How? the search for an answer would bring us to the first wonder about these people. Aside from the fact that these guys are really skilled hunters... Why do you like they going to war? With animals. Mm, so <laughs> been in the game for many centuries, they seem to have some of the strongest bodies on the planet. Without and any the way acid, they shoot through trees and all, like it's a bullet. Mm. They got dogs and everything. Thanks to them. modern gymming facilities, the guys are really muscular and strong, and you real? would even see well-built abdominal muscles on kids. So it looks like they all came to Earth with some Hulk body as souvenirs. And this would explain why the young boys and old men could handle the toughest animals. But when you think of the work and energy that goes into hunting for food daily, you would understand why the guys may never need a gym to stay fit. The fact that they have to do these things from an early age even makes the bodybuilding thing easier for them. And Joe Rogan seems to understand this perfectly. Nah, Just crazy. getting by as a hunter-gatherer with the crazy bow that you have to pull back and you're running through the woods all the time, like, you have to be fit. It's it's unbelievable. What a crazy way to live. <laughs> Having those strong, well-built bodies is not close to being the most interesting fact about the Hadza people. One of the things that really worry scientists about these people is the kind of relationship that they have with nature. Since they are majorly hunter-gatherers, the Hadza tribe do not only depend on the games they catch, but they also have a thing for wild fruits and wild honey, especially. <laughs> But this is where it That's gets honey, a little bro. intense. The entire oh. tribe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was straight boo boo. <laughs> no, for the folk chewing on the honey, 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 it's honey. Yeah, honeycomb. Yeah, honeycomb. Yes, for known for eating wild honeycombs mm -hmm. like it's some snack. And if you know how obsessed bees are with their honeycombs, you should know an ordinary human wouldn't try to go near them unprotected, let alone eat them directly. Surprisingly, it looks like the bees are especially in love with the Hadza tribe. This special love allows the people to eat honey directly from the forest and not be bothered about being bitten by the bees. So this fuck, see the bees on his fucking What? Head. Them folks immune to bee stings, bro? 
No. Yep. They're lighting him up, and he's eating the honey. And it anyway. does nothing to him. Really? So we go climb. Hey, come on, climb the tree. Guy sticks his fucking hand in the tree, <gasps> scoops that out, starts eating it like it's a fucking hamburger. Bees, and I'm like, bro, I'm cool. Well, it's not that they are not being bitten by the bees, but the bites just have nothing on them. You can say that they have some special kind of body or they've just gotten so used to being bitten by the bees that they are no longer bothered. I guess that is scientifically possible, right? Being stung by bees since they were kids could be the reason they are now immune to bees. And they're just... Doesn't bother them. It doesn't bother them. They're, they're fine with it and their body has also gotten immune to it. Right. That's crazy. They're it's biting insane. that honeycomb like it's a snack and all those bees were on his head, his hands. And the thing you never see... Okay guys, the bee thing could make sense to scientists and there may be an explanation for it, but this is where the scientists may have to deal with some unanswered questions. Guess what? The Hadza tribe may have some mind-boggling friendship with birds as well. Since they are so obsessed with wild honey, they usually need help to know where the honeycombs are sometimes and this is where the birds come in. According to the guest on Joe Rogan's podcast, the Hadza tribe has a special way of communicating with the birds. Imagine that you can just make a sound and the birds will lead you to your next meal. Sounds crazy, what? right? Well, David Chu was able to experience that with the Hadza people. Dude, these motherfuckers are so in tune with nature that they'll go, they'll make a bird sound and a bir they're talking to the bird and the bird will show you where the honey is. What? Like, and then... Anyway, as weird and interesting as that no, sounds, it's just human. the least of the worries of scientists as far as this tribe is concerned. In fact, when compared to the Maasai people that drink cattle blood, these people do not only violate the law of science, it probably does not exist around them. I mean, how do you explain that people eat raw animals? Yeah, you heard that right. And not just animals, these guys actually feed on raw snakes and snack on bush babies without having to cook them at all. Of course, that would sound like a fake story made up by some what? bad storyteller until you hear it from the mouth of Joe Rogan's guest. No, ain't no way they're going outside people with snake and just cutting the head off and eating it. No, what? Mm -mm. How? I thought snake was venomous. No, I don't love him. I mean, yeah. But but how, bro? They, they default. Insanely absurd. Like, I've never even thought about people doing this, to be honest with you. Oh my God. who stayed months with the tribe. According to him, the kids could just catch a snake from a tree, bite off the head, and chew it raw. Now, <laughs> tell me how science will <laughs> be able to- Bite off the like, head! The snake move you and then bite it. <laughs> like you got a snack, bro. You got a Slim Jim straight out the tree. <laughs> you got a fresh Slim Jim. Nah, you eating that food too fresh, buddy. Who interpret that, right? He's like, Grabbing a snake and biting his head off. He's oh like, my he's god. He's like, you want some thing? Climbing a tree with He just grabbed a snake and just bit his grabbed, head off. He takes out his slingshot, the rock, a pebble this big, bam, hits a bush baby out of the tree, breaks his leg, breaks his legs, puts it here, he's like, snack for later. Trust me, scientists know that there is something special about this tribe, even if they can't explain it. For this reason, they have come up with some hypothesis that these guys could have some special microbes in their guts that help them to process these strange things that they consume. And according to scientists, these microbes do not exist anywhere else in the world. Well, the <laughs> hypothesis could be an attempt to answer some of their questions about these people, but they seem to be doing some strange and hilarious things in the process. After speculating that they may have special microbes in their guts, the scientists might have been sneaking into their caves to steal their poops for testing. Quite funny, huh? On this episode oh, well, of the... So they, they got a cave that they go boo-boo in. Yeah, probably. That's crazy, too. Just, ain't. For how long? Forever. The wild sh... The wild sh... Yeah. Think about how many animals... Just bugs and... They probably should end the world. And flies. Joe Rogan experience, the guest stated how the tribesmen claim to have seen modern men who came to steal their poops on some occasions. They have um, some, uh, what do you call it, microbes and gut biome kind of things in their stomach that no one else on the planet has. So the translator's explaining to me, Canadian, uh, sci like scientists come and literally steal their shit. They find them and they steal their shit and I'm like, their actual poop. Their actual Just poop. Just to get their biome. Because there's biomes in there that don't exist anywhere. Maybe these people really hold That's some insane. secrets that are rare <laughs> to mankind. Who knows? 
Though their peculiarity may be a bit strange when you think about it, it could hold a lot of promises. And if the scientists are really able to come up with something from the supposed poop testing, the Hadza tribe may open the doors to a whole new level of knowledge in medicine. The people of Papua. We people. would die if we did half of the stuff they do. Really, like what is COVID? Them folks are immune to eating raw anything. And we over here getting sick of COVID. Ebola, we have Ebola for some bats, come on now. I don't know what they even, I don't know what sicknesses do they even really deal with over there. Do they even get sick over there? If the blood drinking practice among the Maasai people and the though. eating of raw animals in Hadza sounds yeah, like the strangest long. things you've heard, then you probably haven't heard of the people of Papua. So let's take a little walk away from the African tribes and talk about the fascinating yet disturbing facts about this tribe, which is located somewhere in Indonesia. The people of Papua, New Guinea, are majorly known to be peaceful people, oh, well, unless for the bad tag which they have on them. The people are kind of popular as cannibals. In fact, oh, I was just gonna say they eat, eat people. people. I was just gonna say I know they gotta eat people. That's terrifying. They've been made the face of cannibalism in the modern day. But here's something about them: though they sometimes eat other people, it's more of a traditional thing. Yeah, cannibalism is one of the most inhumane things that have been flagged red in our world today. But that's because of the current civilization. I mean, people now understand these things better, but there are some tribes who still live in the old age until now. These tribes that know nothing about the new world choose to stick with their old tradition, and unfortunately for the people of Papua, cannibalism is one of those old ways. But as disturbing as this act is, these people seem to have a fascinating story behind it. Unlike other brutal tribes, the people of Papua do not hunt other humans just to feed them, but they only feed on the body of the deceased for several reasons. Firstly, they have a belief that be you dead people? <laughs> if you die, they gonna just go and cut you up and eat you. Cool, but like, if he die. Imagine somebody like, bro, I ain't had to eat in days. Bro, sleep, I'm just finna go ahead, just knock him oh, off and act like oh, I had to do that. Crazy. Nah, you gonna have food tomorrow, though. <laughs> <laughs> we have food tomorrow. Belief that it is a way of showing honor to their beloved people when they pass on. So strange as it may sound, this tribe would rather feast on the body of their deceased friends than bury or cremate them. In their tradition, it is disgraceful for the carcass of a beloved family member to be eaten by what worms. Now, I guess they would think that they are doing the tribe a favor, but one thing that makes this practice scary is the fact that the tradition still continues till today. While the first reason may sound like a tenable excuse, the people of Papua may have other reasons to practice cannibalism. According to Forrest, a guest on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast, the people sometimes feed on the body of their deceased enemies after a war. This could be a sign of victory, but in their tradition it was a way of warding off evil spirits that may be attached to the bodies of the deceased enemies. How often do they practice cannibalism? It is a... It's not a daily thing. It is a spiritual thing where they actually eat the eat the w other tribes deceased after a war or an intertribal conflict as a way to like ward off bad spirits. So it's not like a daily thing. It's not like they're going out hunting each other. It's more like when these things occur, they they have to eat a certain kill or a certain body to keep evil spirits at bay. All right, I'm pretty sure that sounds like the craziest thing you may ever hear especially with the current level of civilization. Eating people is like top so life, top of the line crazy. Like we thought, I thought dogs were crazy, cats were crazy, but people. So far, what's more crazy? Them eating people or the other people eating dead? I mean, eating people. Animals, it's no, it's and, none uh, above eating people. And uh, drinking blood. People. It's none above eating it's people. crazy right now. It's the craziest. Who would ever thought to eat people? Like, At least they cook. Civilization in the world today. However, the people of Papua still continue to live like this and they probably see nothing wrong with their tradition and beliefs. And good for them, the disease which usually arises from cannibalism is not so common among them. On this episode of the Joe Rogan Experience, Joe's guest seems to think that they have been escaping the disease because they do not really practice cannibalism all the time, except for rare occasions when someone dies. Do they oh get that goodness. version of mad cow's disease? Oh, no except idea. for rare occasions That's when someone human. dies. 
Do they get that version of mad cow's disease that cannibals get? Was it Jakob's Krutzfeld? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. I'm not sure. I think it's probably infrequent enough that they're not getting it. The pygmies of the Congo Basin. Man, look at the teeth okay. of that person. How his teeth get like that? Well, they calm them down so they can eat me. Oh, we. Now, <laughs> let's wrap up our list with this peculiar tribe drenched in a bit of a sad story. Though the use of the word pygmy is now classified as derogatory, it has been used to describe a group of people who are dominant in Central Africa. The pygmies of the Congo Basin are classified as a tribe because they are typically up to about 900,000 and they all have the same short heights. <laughs> According to typically up to about 900,000 like and they Why all have the same short heights. Like According to research, the tallest men in this tribe are only a few inches above four feet. What? However, it would come as a shock that they live successfully as hunter-gatherers. No. Yes, they are extremely short and named a tribe of pygmies, but they have some of the strongest men whose duty is to hunt animals for food. Just like the Hadza men, these pygmies make use of crude tools which they produce at home to hunt large animals. However, as nice as this may sound, the pygmies of the Congo Basin have also been victims of other cannibalistic like tribes around time. the world. Sea of the Congo River? from guerrilla warfare, from crazy waterfalls, disease, that's an expedition I'd like to try. And then when it comes to wildlife, I mean, the list is infinite. There's so many of these animals that I'm desperate to try and find. Th those sound like very dangerous trips. Since they are typically shorter and smaller than the average people, this tribe have had to face extreme dangers in the hands of cannibals who think it is okay to hunt them. Sounds exciting to me. Right. You know, is giving that shot that other, taking that shot that other people aren't taking. So. Have people visited these cannibals and come out of there before? Yep, yep. There, was a, there was a Nat Geo photographer who got some incredible photos. They're called the car. According to Forrest Galanti, people know better now, and there are chances that these pygmies are no longer being hunted, probably. However, the fact that they have been heavily hunted in the past has raised a whole lot of questions in the modern world today. Many people believe that a lot of pygmy or dwarf tribes may have gone extinct due to this kind of inhumane acts. I mean, if cannibalism could make it until this present day, just imagine how rampant and brutal it must have been in times past. So many pygmy tribes may have been lost to the dangerous tradition of cannibalism, and no one would have even heard about those tribes. And um, he went in there, it took him a while for them to kind of assimilate and get comfortable, and then he got these photos that are just mine. Yet, if we put aside the possibility that these pygmy tribes might have been hunted into extinction, we would be able to focus on the beauty of the ones that exist until today. I mean, the fact that a whole tribe is full of tiny humans who are still fit enough to live normal lives in the forests is something that may trouble the minds of scientists for a long time. We're talking about almost a million small people, so peculiar that they are called a tribe. A I million? guess they may count as the most fast. A million? <laughs> That's a whole world of people. A million people in the tribe? That's a lot of people. They was get eight? They just eating them away. They were eating people. They were just eating the whole tribe like grapes. <laughs> <laughs> eating tribe, if you ask me. All right, thanks for sticking with us until the very end. Hope you had a fun and interesting oh, time of man. learning as we look through these amazing tribes. What are your thoughts about these groups of people? Which of them do you think is really a threat to science? Let us know your... Man, that's crazy right there. And that little guy, man. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe, comment down below any videos y'all wanted to do. And um, don't eat people. For sure, for sure. 15 weirdest wedding rituals have sex with the mother-in-law. That man, buddy, these... Like, I can't even fathom some of these traditions that they're doing in other places. But y'all go sub up, man. We're trying to get to a 1,000 by the end of the month. Tell your mama, tell your friends, tell your cousin, tell your auntie to come sub up, man. We appreciate y'all. At the end of the day, you already know, stay yavish.